Hello. So today, um, I just felt like making a video. And I thought, because I've been making so many of these uh, granny squares with the Daisy Center, I thought I'd make a video on how I do that. So let me zoom out a little bit and show you the different ones. These ones all have three rows of color. Um, and because of the different yarns, they're all with a four millimeter hook. Because of the different yarns, you will see there's a variation in size. And so what I have been doing is I have been making them in the different colors. And then later on, I will match up according to the type of yarn. So this one is actually quite thick. Let me just move these lights up a little bit. You can see better. These ones are actually quite thick, this yarn. They haven't been washed or blocked. This one is pulling a little bit. It's not a very giving yarn, which is strange, um, because the same brand, the other colors are actually more flexible. So, but it is what it is. Um, this one's very nice. It's turned out very nicely, these ones. It's the strangest thing with yarn. Uh, one can think, well, I want a particular color, and then you buy it, and it's not as easy to work with as one would hope. So what I really like to do is when I order from a company, is I order one ball of each color as far as possible, um, and then I can see which ones work together. The different dye lots, uh, different tensions come from exactly the same hook, exactly the same pattern. And these ones over here, look at these ones. The red ones are nice. Different colored centers. I am trying to work through my lockdown stock of yarn. So whatever yarn there is, I'm using for the border. This in the center here is from Poundland. It is a glitter yarn. It's white with a strand of with a strand of um, metallic in it and in the centers uh, this uh, this is not <laughs> that's just a plain one uh, the centers are different yarns I've tried to use a thicker yarn they're all DK but as you can see this is supposed to be a DK and that is supposed to be a DK and look at the difference in the result it's a much thicker one so I've tried to use the slightly thicker ones for the, um, the centers, just to bulk them up a bit. Um, it wasn't imperative, it's just that I've started doing that, uh, just to use up my stock. So I have little baskets, also from Poundland, I do love Poundland. And these are all the little centers that I've worked on. They have been closed. These are the blue with the white, two different shades. These are the pinks with the white, two different shades. Uh, as you can see this, it's a, I use a magic loop in the center, a magic circle, magic loop. So when I sew it up, I'll giving, be giving that a little tug so close it up snug, snugly. And I just use remnants of yarn. So I'll be making a whole, I make a whole lot of these. I make them in stages. So I make a whole lot of one stage and then I work on the whole lot of the next stage. So for instance, these all have to be sewn in. So there's a whole lot of that stage. These haven't been closed. So we'll just put these aside for the moment. I won't mix them up with the ones that have been completed. There's nothing nicer than to watch a TV series and do all just one stage, one step. And there's no thinking, the hands just do it. Or you can do a mantra or sit out in the garden and you don't have to think about anything because the hands just work by themselves. So this is just a rem remnant of yarn. It's fantastic for using remnants. This, use, this is just over one arm's length to make these little stitches. 
So I have a lot of remnants and um, I'll be going through them and anything that's over an arm's length I simply uh, make a circle out of. These are slightly bigger. These have four rows. That's just one color. I've used two colors there. So you can see that they are actually larger. Um, here it is. Let me show these ones. They're pretty. That's upside down. Now, here's the thing is that I first made this batch when I was making the daisies. And the daisy, because of the way it was done, I realized daisy was in theory upside down because as you can see that is the so-called good finish so the next batch I worked this row here differently because I flipped my work with each with each row so depending on how you start this row whether you're working from the front of the daisy or the back of the daisy it will determine when you do your last row how your um, your daisy will lie. Will you have your daisy coming up, which is actually really pretty, or will you have your daisy going in? So one needs to just keep an eye on that. When you are planning to make them, count how many rows you are. Not yeah, how yeah, many rows you have. Now, you don't actually have to turn your work each time if you are making the granny square. You can do the the, the, the granny square all facing one way um, if that makes any sense um, you don't uh, let me see if I have one I tend not to do it that way uh, here's two rows no that's no, not oh yes here we go <laughs> now what am I talking about this is not I have a square somewhere I don't know where it is it's my flop square uh, I was working in rounds just to see what the, the effect was but I just love turning my work it makes it completely even square because the tension changes with each row. So that's my personal favorite. Okay, so let's get down to work. These are normal squares uh, with the normal center. And I have another video on that. So we won't be doing that. So this is the pound land called Central Sparkle. Sparkle yarn. But you can use any brand really. put these chaps over there see when I break the ball if I haven't used the, the, the yarn winder this is so practical it prevents it from getting dirty and um, you can move it about when you just want to pause your work you can literally drop it into the basket so that's really practical I'm going to put these ones aside so we are going to start with this little part here in the middle and then we will do the white. I'm going to zoom in from here. Sorry about the squeaky chair. Hopefully once I stop moving, it'll be fine. So there we go. I'm starting with a magic circle. So that means the yarns to the front. Wrap it once. Hook in. Make the first initial knot nice and tight and then I chain one. This is going to count as my first stitch. I need eight stitches so this counts the first. I'm now going to be doing seven half double crochet. That's a US term. I cannot find the UK term for a half double crochet so you'll just have to watch. Wrap the yarn go through the magic circle, fetch the yarn. You now have three on your hook. I go through all three. Wrap the yarn, go and fetch your yarn, pull through all three. And I'll be making seven of those. So I've made two so far. I'm just going to count as I make them. You can watch as you go. Unless you know how to do these already, then you don't need to watch. Number three. Number four, number five, number six, 
and number seven. I always double check before I take my um, before I cut the yarn. What I need are seven V's. So starting right down at the bottom, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven V's. This V here will make the eighth. I need eight V's because I am going to be making eight clusters of white. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's really imperative that when you start your white row, you know that you have eight V's. So I've counted seven there, seven V's. Now I like to work with a long piece of yarn. So as before I take it down like that, I've just finished my seventh V, counted them, stretch it out, cut between the fingers. And now I pull the yarn out. And I have this little worm. So I'll make a whole lot of them and then I'll go to the next step. The next step is I get myself a darning needle. You can either go for a blunt. If you use a sharp, you have to use the back of the head. This is a magnet holds them all together. So for this particular task, I'll just use a blunt because we don't actually want to break the yarn of the V. And that can happen if you use a sharp. So sharp pointed. So there I have my little worm. <clears throat> I'm going to unravel the magic circle, give it a little tug, make sure that it's unraveled, come through, tug it some more. When we sew these tails in later, I'll give it a sharp tug. For now, I just need to close that hole there. Now it's going to seem a bit odd. You can think, well, that's, that's not enough. I'm missing something. No, you're not. It's going to be a little bit tight, but it works out later on when you start using the white. Now you can count backwards on your first test, uh, on your first circle, just so that you know what you're doing. But as you make lots of them, your eye will actually know what it's doing. So we'll just do it for now. We're going to go back seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's number seven there. Because if you're not too sure, if you're not counting, you might actually go into that one. And that's not where you want to go into. You want to go into this one here. And now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating the eighth V. We've pulled it through there. We're going to come back to the base of that yarn. We're going to go through not only the top, we're going to go through the bottom and this little tiny loop there. One, two, and three loops. Just my personal preference. You'll soon work out how, how you want to do it. Everyone's a bit different. I just like to do it because it takes the yarn all the way down. Later on, once we have finished the white, here we go, you see how they're lying there? We have finished the white. You have the choice to now sew these in. I wait until I've finished all my colors and then I sew them in. Personal preference. So you've gone down there, you can take out your needle and you can drop it. And if you have a whole pile of them, you'll do them all together. Now, this little guy's finished. And in theory, you would put them into the basket with all the other ones. But we are just going to go ahead and we are going to work on the white. The daisy can be any color you want. Um, I like this white very much because it's actually... Uh-oh. 